full padded work. <clears throat> and uh, we played ball. I mean, we went right into it. And you know, we, uh, this was a day of work. Tomorrow will be more uh, preparation for the spring game on Saturday, but working second and third down situations, working team run, working some play action stuff. Um, plays under pressure, you know, the usual stuff you want to kind of finish off with at the end of spring ball, but uh, we stayed off the ground. We went thud today, but it was physical, and the guys really practiced with a lot of energy, and guys continue to push. You know, we make it a kicking competition as well, so those guys did a nice job today getting after, but just pushing forward. Any clarification on the format for Saturday? Is it going to be a full game? It's, it's going to be a game. You know, we're going to play a game, um, and, um, you know, the special teams part of it, we'll thud that up. You know, but when we start playing, we're going to start this whole game on live tackle. One team against another, you know, coaches on opposite sides, calling plays, getting them in, um, and playing ball and competing, which is what we got to do. Okay. So the spring game can never be something that's taken lightly. It can't be something that's just kind of a dress rehearsal. It is not. It is not. It is an extra day of work. It's the 15th practice that the NCAA grants us, and we will use it. Can you split the teams yet? We have. There's some trades going on behind the scenes. <laughs> How are they chosen? <laughs> well, we didn't have a draft. Uh, that's the question. We made sure that that we're putting our our best against our best. We want to get something out of it. You know, I know that's been there's been different formats. Even we've used some different formats that um, maybe I kind of allowed myself to get talked into, and we're not going to do that. We're going to go. Uh, Split up the team so that the one offense ends up going against the one defense, so they're on opposite teams, and the two offenses against the two defense. But again, it's so. In other words, you know, those teams are dressed in their respective uniforms, respect the sides of the field, respect the locker rooms, and we're looking forward to uh, these guys getting after. You know, we we were out there. We were explaining to them the importance of what this game means, how we honor the military, how we uh, we honor our fans. Right, an opportunity this spring for them to come out to see us. Uh, to honor the alumni and a lot of guys are coming back which is great to see and we'll put it out again today to invite them all back because that's so important understanding what they have done and how high they set the bar and it's how our job to continue to work there and elevate it at some point and then um, as well as you know there's a lot of our own families are in town right you know, my father-in-law is in the military retired military right so it's uh that and then plus of course it's a huge recruiting weekend and all we want to do is show what we are and who we are and the rest takes care of itself. You know, we feel we have the best place in the country with the best fans, and the best energy and passion. So, you know, we just be us, you know, be who we are. It should be a great weekend. How important is the spring game from a recruiting standpoint? Is it one of the bigger weekends that you have over the years? It is, it is. It starts with the weather. You know, good start today. We'll get a weather report later. I'll make sure to send that out, but it will be clear skies and we'll be ready to get after it. Uh, it's, it is because I mean, it won't be up until, what is it? It's April 20th, right? I should remember that, my wife's birthday. I should mention that now for some points because I won't see her at all on Saturday. So, <laughs> but up until the season, this will be the only time to have a chance to get a feel for what Austin can be like, what our fans are like, what the environment and the community and the town is like, to see our players, our student athletes in action, and then interact with them you know, on, on the outside as well, right? So it's a... Uh, all these alum in town, I mean, it's there's a lot of juice. This is going to be treated like a game. We've been preparing for it like a game. Tomorrow when those teams will split up, I'm sure they'll come up with a couple of creative plays to throw in the game as well. And uh, we're going to get after it. We're going to play it out. We're going to play it out. What do you personally look forward to the most for the spring game? Competing. You know, competing and execution. The simplicity of blocking and tackling, throwing and catching, running, securing the football, trying to knock the ball out. Getting a line, knowing your assignment, playing with great pad level, with great technique and fundamentals, hands inside, and playing with passion. You know, using this as an opportunity to prepare for the season and understanding that our season has some tremendous challenges to it, you know, both at home and on the road, and knowing that for us to get to where we want to get to, every single opportunity counts. When you started the, uh, you started the spring, uh, you had an idea in mind where you wanted to be when spring ended. And you got this final practice, spring game. Are you, are you where you want to be? Is this team giving you what you want? They've given us what we wanted in, in terms of passion and energy and effort. Um, we will never answer that question saying that we've got. Uh, from a mentality standpoint, from a standard standpoint. You know, these guys themselves, you know, with the help of the coaching staff, 
have set a standard so high that it's almost impossible to get to. Okay, but it is it's it is reachable, but it's going to require every ounce of everything that we have. We want to keep elevating that thing, and we want to feel that we have to keep getting there, that we're not there yet, and and that's the feel. I'm not trying to cliche it or trying to you know slogan it up or anything like that. It's just that it's just we we've, we've hit the reset button, we've elevated it, and it's um. Uh, it's a necessity for us, so let's keep doing it. How is Cyrus and um, Darian kind of taking advantage of the opportunity with CJ not being full though for, for spring? CJ has been full. I know I got that question last week, and I was a little bit like, something must be out there. CJ, he's good. Oh yeah, CJ okay. has been full goal. Did we hold him out a little bit early on? Sure. Absolutely. He got a lot of carries. You know, and a guy like that, you have to monitor where his body is at the end of. But CJ is like 100 okay. percent full so goal. I guess then how is yeah, no, no, it's good that you bring that up because that way we could always have transparency. We're never going to, you know, uh, violate that. Darian has come down. He's, got, he's sick. So Darian is going to miss the game on Saturday. And it's a shame because he was doing extremely well. But he came down with something just a couple of days ago. So he's um, it would be tough to get him there for the game. He'll be on the sideline probably, but uh, as long as it's not contagious. But, you know, <laughs> but he's just going through a lot of guys go through one of those bugs or whatnot. So, uh, but no, CJ's going to go. Cyrus has been doing great. Can't say enough about Travis Dye. I mean, all those guys could do it in the run game, they could do it in the pass game. The best thing that they've done, and I, and I wish you could sit in on, on a meeting with Coach Mastro, the way those backs work with Coach Mastro. I mean, protection has gone through the roof. These guys now hunt people up. They're more physical, their bodies are more developed. They understand now what safety rotation means. They understand the bluffs by the secondary and the nickel better. And that's that's like a, you know, I'm talking about protection, that's why I'm happy, right? Protection, you gotta protect a guy. These guys, they, they've taken that next step and their uh, recognition and their reaction to pressure. Mastro said he felt like that was their biggest growth from fall camp of last year until now, past pro. Is that yeah, and you know, probably that too is, you know, these guys, you know, coach is very disciplined, Coach Mastro, about what these guys have to have their eyes on. I think what's happened now over time, the, you know, the transformation, the process of the natural transformation of a running back where when you get here at first, you know, it's like, see a little and you know a little and and now that thing is opening up where they spatially can understand the whole thing conceptually that's a big step for a running back they now understand that certain fronts block certain ways they still trust their eyes they trust their process but be ready for a guy to jump over and be able to hit a backside crease in the air v gap so no they've uh can't say enough about i'm always messing with them always messing with them i'm talking about you know we're gonna, we're gonna be able to run over a guy today, or you know, we're gonna get <laughs> knocked back the other way. So they're good guys. Mario, teams are, are often gauged on their progress, um, always gauged on their progress. From last year to this year, how much has this team progressed in every aspect? Culture, physicality, the way they attack practice in the classroom. How's that work? Yeah, I think um, another big step. I do. I think last year was a, a really big step. I remember we had this talk last year and we felt it, we saw it, the film's not gonna lie, right? Um, the way that you handle yourself on and off the field, the way you handle yourself in the cafeteria, you know? I mean, if we walk in there and there's there's spinach on the floor and there's trays left out, that, that would be a problem. We don't do that. You know, if, if please and thank you aren't common words that are used often in our in our language and interactions, well, then they not haven't done a good enough job. You know, we, we live a life of gratitude and we understand that Humbly, we have a great opportunity. So I think the combination of that, the combination of another offseason with those awesome strength coaches that we have and the development that has gone with it is, you know, and then throw that in with expectations, you know, for ourselves and knowing process and understanding them, you see another jump. You see another jump and so then you create room for even more elevation. So it's, uh, you know, I mean, we're born, we're process oriented. So the answers aren't gonna be very, you know, they're not gonna make a, they're not gonna make any headlines. It's just what we do. Now we feel strong about it, and we, we do it with conviction, you know, and that's that's always strong. So you say Darian's expected to miss Saturday. Any other players you think you'll be without? We're gonna assess a couple guys, you know, to see how uh, how they came out today. Today was a physical day, you know, nothing major out there, but certainly you know guys get nicked up. So as soon as we get that report, I'll be sure to get that out so that our guys can get it to you. We don't, expect much. we don't expect many guys to miss. Gary Baker, we've held out all spring because of, but he looks really good. Like, we're confident he'll be joining us. Rockmore today was, we had a, he, he almost tried to jump in there. We're like, oh, big daddy, hold on. Oh, we need you for the season.
you've mentioned the new coaches quite a bit, but what's the dynamic been like with the staff with Bobby taking over the tight ends as well as the special teams? Yeah, Bobby's coached for a little bit, you know. He's, uh, I think when you speak with Bobby, I think you guys know what you get is a, a genuine professional uh, with a high level of passion uh, and just a wealth of information that just makes people around him better as players and as coaches. And our players love him. Our players love him because of the way he presents himself, because the way he connects with them. Um, yeah, I didn't recognize him the other day. He's out here swagged out of Nike stuff. I thought he was a teenager just running around and with his hat on backwards and all that stuff. But uh, Bobby means so much to the program, and he's brought so much to the program that I think the transition has been a great one. Um, his, I mean, his last tight end that he coached was O.J. Howard. He did okay, you know. And, uh, I think he's going to continue to just make that, that tight end position get better and better. And I think we saw that thing today. You know, we, we had the perimeter block and drill. We involved everybody, you know, running backs, tight ends, receivers. Tremendous step in that direction. Good night for a couple more. Nick Saban let the uh, media call a few plays of the Alabama Spring Game. Did he? How would you feel about Is us? Is there a sign-up sheet out yeah, here? Or taking, <laughs> how would you feel about us taking over the keys of the offense? For uh, I, you know what? I just I think it's a great idea. I want to make sure that none of our starters are in there when we do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I think it's a good idea. Why don't we, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it for um, – for the spring game, and um, I think it's 2036. <laughs> you know, we'll get all those plans brought up. Sounds good. We've got some good plays. And we'll get it going. Man. Yes, sir. Absolutely. We know what you get out of Justin, but what do you want to see from your backups? What we've been seeing all uh, all spring long. Uh, I can't say enough about Tyler Shuck. Um, I want to see Kale play a little bit as well. Uh, Tyler has taken a significant step. I say that emphatically because of what we have seen. A lot of times he's working behind, you know, sometimes when the twos or ones get banged up, he's working behind the three o line. And he's got some pretty good pass rushes on this team. And he's, he's making things happen. And he's negotiating those and being creative and extending plays with his feet as well. Um, and he's combined that with his presence, his command of the offense, making sure that young receivers are aligned correctly if they are not before the ball is snapped to prevent ourselves from getting a penalty. So we expect him to command the second offense, just like we expect our first quarterback to command the first offense. Mario, you mentioned, one. You mentioned your father-in-law and then your his service and then your early service early in your life. I'm just curious what, what this means to you personally to be able to perform in front of our military men and women and, and have this game associated with our military. We talked about it as a team out there. I don't think it's ever mentioned enough. I don't think we ever show enough gratitude um, for the military. Um, you know, we asked our guys out there, how many, um, how many of you guys have uh, family members in the military? About 80% of those hands went up. And how many in the last you know, 10, 12 years have experienced, you know, a deployment or something of that nature and all that stuff? And a bunch of hands were up as well. So. It's, uh, it's something that we t we all take to heart. I take to heart. I know our staff does as well. Um, it's the very least we can do. I mean, it's it's uh, we need to do more. But this is a great start to it. Um, complete appreciation, honor, and love for what they do, the sacrifice they have made, and the sacrifice they will continue to make. And it's something that it's a tradition. When I first arrived here, at Oregon, the first time I saw it, I was blown away. Like. You know, so it's awesome and uh, love, it. love it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you.